الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in سورة الإسراء chapter 17 and verse 1 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Exalted is he who took his servant by night from Al-Masjid Al-Haram to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, whose surroundings we have blessed to show him of our signs. Indeed, he is hearing, he is the hearing, the seeing. Isra Al-Mi'raj, we are in the days of Isra Al-Mi'raj, I think it was last weekend. And this event is one of the, among the greatest events in human history. This great event happened during the Meccan period when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he spent a period in Mecca where, you know, he was spreading Islam. And this period was marked, you know, around that time, the hostility and, and the hurt that he was getting and the rejection he was getting from Quraysh. His uncle and his wife, radiallahu anha, they died months apart. And it was a tough period, so he had no one to protect him from Quraysh. So he went to a Ta'if to see if they would support Islam and, and would support him and protect him from Quraysh. Now he went 40 to 45 miles each way on foot in rocky terrain to, you know, to seek for protection to, to continue spreading, spreading the message. And the people of a Ta'if rejected him and they you know, let their thugs and let their children go out there and insult him and throw rocks at him until, you know, his feet bled. So this is around the time where Isra and Mi'raj happened. A week later, Allah Taala rewarded his servant, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with this trip. So this trip, the itinerary was, you go from Mecca to Medina and from Medina to heaven, to see of Allah's signs. So as if Allah Taala was telling his beloved prophet, if the people of earth did not support you, did not care for you, we care for you. It's, it's, such, it's such a beautiful thing when Allah Taala loves you and has care for you. So he said, forget about the people of earth, come to heaven, we'll, we'll honor you as you should be honored. And in the ending of the verse, it says, inna huwa sami'u al-basir. He is the all-seeing, all-hearing, all all-seeing. That ending fits into the, into the verse because it, it, Allah is telling him, we see you, we hear you, we know what you're going through. We're going to make it up to you. We're going to show you how much we love you and, and honor you. So let's take a look at, at the Isra piece. The Prophet ﷺ had no idea that this meeting was going to happen. Angel Jibreel came in, woke him up from his sleep in the middle of the night. Says, let's go. Make tawaf seven times around the Kaaba, pray, and then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go to Jerusalem. He gave him the itinerary. Now, Jibreel brought an animal, it's called Al-Buraq. He is white. He is between a donkey and a, and a, and a, and a mule in size. And, and this, was a very special creature that he was never going to use it to go from Mecca you know, to, uh, to uh, Jerusalem. So the Prophet ﷺ got on Al-Buraq and Jibreel rode behind them heading to Jerusalem. Now the Prophet ﷺ described this Buraq is his speed was his, when he jumps his hoofs hit where his eyesight ends. Now, humans have 20-some mile vision. We don't know what his vision is. So basically, he would jump wherever his sight is, that's where he lands, and he jumps. He might be going the speed of light, and that's maybe where Al-Buraq from Barq, lightning. He was going lightning speed. He got them to Jerusalem in no time. So these, these are from, from the miracles, from, from the creation of Allah, and Allah described Man, as you only know, but a little bit. We only have just a little bit of knowledge. Allah has all of the knowledge. There are so many wondrous things in the universe that Allah has made us known or kept it to Himself. 
that we, we don't know anything. So we should, you know, th this divine knowledge and ability is limitless. And we only have a little bit of knowledge. So we shouldn't let science and our lim limitation of our mind, you know, make us forget Allah Taala and his power. We'll never be able to come up with an animal like that that can, you know, fly the, you know, the, the speed of light. We can even travel the speed of light. So Allah Taala shows us signs that we as humans, we can never rival. And these are from his signs. And this trip happened, whether people believe it or don't believe it, it happened. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jibreel, they, they reached Jerusalem. They dismounted from Al-Buraq. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tied the you know, Al-Buraq to a ring on the wall. Now tie him, why? I mean, this ride was sent specifically for the Prophet for his journey, like he was gonna run away. But that's not the point. The point is the Prophet ﷺ was teaching us that you do your part, then you rely on Allah. You don't want that animal to run away. You tie him and then you say, Ya Allah, take care of him, make sure that he doesn't go away. You don't let him loose and then hope for the best. That's not how tawakkul works. So that, that's, you know, that's a side point. So the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel entered Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in the middle of the night, maybe 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. It was in the middle of the night. Typically, there shouldn't be anyone at the masjid at that time. It's pitch dark. There's nobody. The masjid was full, was full of prophets. All of the prophets from Adam, including Adam, until Sayyidina Isa radiallahu anhu majma'een, all of them were gathered at the Masjid Al-Aqsa waiting for the Prophet Sallallahu to greet him and to meet him. Now the, all of the prophets stood up to pray and then Jibreel told Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam step forward, lead them in prayer. And leading the prayer is significant. And the significant is not just leading the prayer. Leading the prayer means he is the leader of all prophets. This was a transfer of responsibility for the message from all of these prophets to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and all believers and all of his followers after that. That was the significance of him standing up and leading all of the prophets in prayer. Because, you know, the prayer did not happen in Mecca, but took place in Jerusalem. The honoring of the Prophet ﷺ happened in Mi'raj, in, in the heavens, when he met his Lord. It, so why was the trip to Jerusalem? Was it necessary? He, I mean, there are no paths from Mecca directly to heaven. Why go to Jerusalem? Why go through that? And why were all the prophets in Jerusalem? Because he ﷺ met them in the seven heavens. As he was ascending the heavens, he met the prophets again during that trip. So what is the significance of going from Mecca to Jerusalem and then from Jerusalem to heaven? The significance is Jerusalem is a sacred land. It's very important for Muslims and for all believers. That's the significance that Allah tells us. Just because you have Mecca, don't forget about Jerusalem. That is also a holy ground and holy place that we have to take care of. So that's from the, the, you know, what we get from Al-Isra. There's an entire chapter in the Quran dedicated for Al-Isra, but you'll never find a chapter called Al-Mi'raj. Because Al-Isra, if you look at Surah Al-Isra specifically, what's, what's the, the main theme of Surah Al-Isra? It talks about the virtues of the Quran. And it talks about the transfer of responsibility for the book from all of the other nations that were before us to us, to Sayyidina Muhammad and to all of the, the Muslims of, the, of this day. That's the transfer of responsibility. That's what you get when you read Surah Al-Isra. It shows you that the, the Quran, everything that's good and wholesome is in the Quran. It's not just for Ramadan. And the Quran is, you know, that's 
what some people misunderstand. You don't open the Quran in Ramadan and then you close it and put it on the shelf for the rest of the year. Shame on you if you do that. The Quran is there to be read every day. Every day. It doesn't matter how much you read. Read as much as you want, but make it daily. Read it. Understand it. Implement it. That's, that's where the power is. And there is no salvation and there is no success except through this Quran. If we don't take care of this Quran, read it, understand it, implement it, and spread it, then Allah Taala may take that responsibility from us and give it to somebody else. We don't want that. So we have to do our part in honoring the Quran by learning it and, and doing what it tells us and not do what it tells us not to and spread it to others. Because as we see, all of the communities that don't have any faith, blood pressure is up. You know, depression is up. Suicide is up. Sin is up. That's what happens when you stray away from Allah's path. We have the solution. The solution is in the Quran. It tells us how to live a righteous life, how to, you know, fulfill our duties in this life so we are happy in this life and in the hereafter. And if we choose to not to spread it to others and make others benefit from it, then Allah may replace us and get somebody else who would do that. And we don't want that.